Ladies and gentlemen, Soviets and Soviets of the Red Army, the Western Front, the Eastern Front, how y'all doing? I am Colin Work. I'm Ring Roo, hello, hello, hello. And folks, we bring you another Ally v. Ally Cold War mashup over on that lovely little map known as Krupa. Now, oh no, not an Ally v. Ally matchup. Rang, correct me, who is fighting here? <laughs> well, on the left-hand side in blue, we have Spanish of Vita playing as Cork559. We have Balance Income. And on the right-hand side, we have Kadef with Vanguard Income playing Scotch. And technically, you're right if we're talking Cold War Khan, because, you know, West Germany and NATO and all of that. True, true. And Cork559, you know, we don't see them nearly ever. So how about you have the fine folks... What to expect from this uh, knee-jerk unit? <laughs> it's just a hodgepodge of things that yeah, have been thrown together, and it kind of works. You got Stuka Spam, you got SS Shupos, which are like Ursad Shrupen, but good, but extremely spammable. And then you got pretty much a tank from every nation. Real, real multicultural. Well, that's the one thing that you know, you know about the the Germans is that during World War II, they were all about those other cultures. They loved to bring those other cultures and letting the fire of friendship in their hearts. <laughs> yes, yes, they're very friendly people. Oh yeah, of course. I mean, yeah. Germans are warm. I mean, I, I've been saying that for decades. Mm -hmm. Uh, but with the Scots, we actually this is a, a week of wonders. On Tuesday, we saw the Canadians. On you now today, we see the Scots. I see a crocodile lingering down in the south, and that is such a unique weapon-like oh, yeah. tooltip that it looks like an assault rifle with a scope on it. The flamethrower? Yes. Yeah. Looks very high-tech. Looks It looks like an old icon, but, you know, it's a flamethrower tank thing. But yeah, we've seen a lot of really cool divisions this week, so keep it up, guys. Thanks for sending these replays. We like seeing... Stuff that's not just 5th SS versus 26 guards for lucky. <laughs> or 20th and 21st. And 2nd and yeah. tank and 3rd tank mech and 3rd guard mech and all of that. So it's nice to see different stuff. It certainly is. And holy mother of pearl, look at the south of the Germans. So the German line is just sprinting like madmen. Oh god, that is... Yep, that's the SS Shupo spam. And some infantry support guns, gonna, you know, most importantly, that Panzer 2C really going to make or break that push. Yes, it certainly is. More likely break. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, <laughs> pessimism aside, to the uh, southern side as well, I guess, for the Allies, for the Scots, excuse me, field engineers, Humbers, assault pioneers, this is a pretty well-rounded force. Like, this is going to be able to take pretty much anything I'll take Kuro can throw at them, which is everything including the kitchen sink. Yeah, yeah. The rifles pretty much uh, match up pretty well against the SS Shupo. The only real issue here is that Genev's tanks are going to take a little bit of a while to get to the front line, so he's probably going to have to wait a minute, or probably just like a minute or so during initial contact to you know, get those important Churchills in position. Probably will be the case. Now the Shupos are charging across the field like it's a bridge too far and he's diving out now. Good plan. The Shupos. 60 of them. <laughs> Holy Moses. This is how many of them there are. Yep. Not even the... Oh no, they are in the garrison. I, I always think there's a garrison right behind the forest and all of these guys are falling back already. So well well, well done. Real, real like clutch placement near yeah, the soap pine is. This completely suppresses them, and the Shupos are now running for the river, rimming across to safety. Now we've got the infantry support gun, uh, pounds in the ray as he blows up the humble there. And, uh, yeah, I think Genev's going to hold out Bridgehead. Yep, especially the Typhoon comes in to start nuking the other side of the river. <laughs> I see, almost killing a commander there. That would have been a real big kill. Real ballsy position to try keeping the commander so close to the front line. Yeah, but oh, definitely something that kind of makes a, a perverse sort of sense. In the meantime, though, uh, another wave of Shupo is being brought on in, as is our first Stuka of the game. Yes! Good yes. So, uh, one thing about the Korug 559 is that these guys have a shit ton of air power. Yeah, they got, like, an absolute crazy amount of these uh, gun-run Stukas. 
And these gun run stukers can be really crazy because they have a lot of 20 mils. And the they can also he die. died immediately. Oh my god. Oh, they're all hyping it all up, you know. And this just immediately gets shot down. Just past this curse, I swear. Well, in, in the words of, um, you know, Boston Move, you get shot down because you're overzealous. <laughs> yes. But uh, play hard to get an AT guns to get jealous. Now I have the mad urge to rewrite that song completely for SD2. In the meantime, in the meantime, the Commandant has fallen back to a much more sensible distance, and mm -hmm. that uh, 204F actually has uh -huh. enough damage to kill stewards. He does, without a fast fire in 25 mil. Oof. There's a chance, but the steward has a better chance, as we clearly see. Continuing to move our way around the multicultural group that is Kurok 559, we are now T-70s coming on in, so the next wave is spawning, so I mm -hmm. feel like this is like a fighting game now. <laughs> Where one honey steward makes a kill. He's lost his brother, but we see how far many waves he can get through first. Yep, it's like kill him for. Mm-hmm. A game that I confess I've never really played a whole much of, but regardless. Yeah, yeah, it's just, I mean, this is Krupa, it's very much a bridgehead map where you fly over either the north and the middle, or southern bridgehead areas. Spanish is doing pretty decent trying to contest this southern side. I feel like it just needs a little bit of indirect artillery support, and you know, probably enough rave of SSU pose to try and break us. There's the real issue is that Stuart and the Crocodile. Almost as much as the fact that the Commandant's going to expose himself on the western bank. Oh no, you really can't afford to lose in the Commandant, yeah. Yeah, it's a really bad idea. The oh. Honey Stewart's going to crush him. But he just he just really wants to lead by the front, Khan, you know? Holding fire is right. Uh, okay, there we go. Yeah, just give up the Shupos, it's not going to be the best thing for you. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're very, very expendable. You can, you can, you'll be fine. Uh, also worth mentioning, the Sperveira Band. So those guys are basically, I would say, the version of Korok coming on in basically, what would you call it, maybe Pegrens, like disheartened Pegrens? I forgot what their loadout is, but well, I think it's something along those lines. MP40, 6 K98s, a Panzer Shrek, and a Panzer Oh, Proust. yeah, that's, that's a really good unit. I mean, when you have a Panzer Shrek and a Panzer Faust, you're, you're really not dying for anti-tank. That's true, and honestly, the great thing about them too is that Considering how shit the Panzer Faust range is, having the Panzer Shrek, well, it gives you twice as many times to be pissed off. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely a really weird loadout, having Panzer Shreks and Panzer Faust together. But hey, you know, when, when you run out of Panzer, you know, Panzer Shreks, you throw in the Panzer Faust. Now, meanwhile, looking to the north just to make sure we're not abusing the southern side here. Uh, there's have a Churchill just shelling the German lines. Uh, not, not a big deal there. Yeah, yeah so I mean, this, this map usually comes down to just this southern flank because it's the most desirable to push as you got the most cover. And Rita is making the push across the bridge once again with his Bavarbans. And if he manages to sneak him up closer, he could start knocking out Humbers. And that's what he's doing right now. He's like, guys, let's go. Uh, unfortunately, the first guy out of that house does get picked off, um, as in any good action movie. Yep. And this crocodile, uh, oh, guys, I would not be crossing those waters. Then be they be infested. This is like, this is straight out of Florida. Yes, yes, it is. Uh, Spivera band. In the meantime, he's oh, come on. close enough. He, yeah, here we go. He can like double. He can like shoot one of the Panzer Shrek and the other of the Panzer Faust. That's how. Well, he fired both at the same damn thing, so... That's oh. the AI for you. AI. Ooh, 203 off map down to the south as well. Dropping down some shells on the southern town. Not hitting a whole lot. Yeah, a bit under Roman. Yeah, this is, this is the breakthrough for you to Manson to push on through the T-70s. Station the Humber. Gonna be flanking the crocodile. Well, the crocodile's already expected, but... No, Ironically, something. he gets an incendiary. <laughs> but this oh my gosh, yeah, there is suddenly nothing here. Yeah, just damn, damn good push there from Vito. Bring out the T-34s, you know, third rave coming in to try and secure this bridgehead. And he's made a pretty good uh, bridgehead so far. 
Ooh, this Mavera bands are coming down after the crocodile. The crocodile oh. is backing up. Maybe? Yes? No? That'd probably be a very good idea for him. Oh my gosh, that's a 250, mil 250 meters. You had it. You had the range, my friend. Run. No longer. Though. Oh, the, the artillery. But it's 15-9. Jesus. Yeah, there's a lot of flags down south, I guess. Well, on the plus side, uh, I think the best place from a artillery perspective to be would be in the bridge, because technically, if the artillery doesn't hit you, it doesn't count. Yeah. And the typhoon, the typhoon gets brought down by all that ground fire. Holy oh, crap! Lord. Yeah, we've got a bunch of uh, thirty-seven mil flat guns. A crocodile, he's holding. True, true. But there's been so much artillery being brought down in the south. We have a twenty-five pounder. Actually, have a T-34 being brought on in now as well from the west. Um, but that 203's got to be pretty much out of munitions already, I feel like. I feel like, yeah. I, I think it's at, at least three artillery barrages, I think. Maybe one more left. Yeah, we've got some motorized rifles now being desperately brought in to try and secure this bridgehead. And all uh, these spare bands are down, but the Shupos... The Shupos, again, these guys are just not really there to be anything besides just a pain in the ass. Yeah. Uh, also worth mentioning, in the north, we do have ourselves a small push happening here. In fact, we have a Mosquito, excuse me, Typhoon, rather, wow, going after the artillery positions, shelling one of them pretty easily. And an MT-34 is going to get pinned down and taken out by these defense groups and a sniper. So, I guess it's true what they say, the best defense is good offense. Yeah. It's a definitely a good call from Sniff trying to probably relieve some pressure down south by putting the pressure on up north. And National Sniper is definitely going to help out quite a bit with picking off Sissy's uh, Spavarabans. That could be an easy, you know, capture, capture the, the, the capture the town up north here. Yeah. So That's true. Defense groups. That's true, but it's still 15-9 again. And again, as we go further and further along, Spanish technically gets more powerful and Gnef technically gets much weaker. Indeed, indeed. Especially if uh, Spanish, uh, you know, has that tiger card and see face. It's only four tigers, if I recall, but at least it's some heavy tanks for a division that kind of just has nothing significant, individually speaking. That is certainly accurate. But uh, piece by piece, the defense groups in the center as well, there's four squads. If they take out this one Spavera band, they could take two flags, even perhaps three. And we have actually an entire infantry column. I'm going to put this in quotes, but rushing to pick up that spot. Mm hmm Yeah, that's a, that's a huge spot. Those flags are so close to each other. That'd be a lot of, uh, a lot of easy points and definitely help ease in the tension. If he manages to capture that town, he could start putting pressure down south and try to cut off the southern reinforcement line. I'm actually almost amused by the fact, too, that we have ourselves a JU-87 stepping into the attack run. Unfortunately, this is not Pippin. Again, that guy bought it all too quickly. Oh, this is a CAT gun run. He's going in for Croc. Ooh. That's the kill. There we go. Yeah, that's why you don't um, take an entire fuel Bowser into the front. <laughs> that's a really bad idea. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the motorized rifles are helping plug his gap, but they're in a bit of a uh, predicament in their position. Because now they are slow and they have to actually walk to the front. Mm hmm. We've got some land suits holding the front now. Literal road, literal road to one machine guns. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Probably was not fun to carry around. Oh my god, I forgot these are the JU 87s, the 20 millimeter. Yeah! Bombs, 4, <laughs> rounds on those things. I know. It's. They're pretty much the A10 Warthog of this game. <laughs> Except even slower, and mm -hmm. having very, very little to self-defense. Yep. Um, at long last, we are going to see a Bofors being brought on in, as well as a Spitfire. So if the JU-87s can keep away from the Spitfire, it has a chance to do some incredible damage. Yeah, but there is AA on the field from Vita, and I think he's going to lose one of the JUs, but the Spitfire is probably going to go down as the well, Mesa He didn't lose the A-10 version, though. He lost the um, AT. 37 millimeter. Yep. yeah. A Spitfire gets away. Here we go, and it does have both force on its side, so he will be 
Oh no! <laughs> this, this, damn, that was. I completely missed. That. I was looking at the center column because I kept hoping that the Ju87 was going to start strafing this infantry column. Damn, that was a real clutch kill on the Spitfire. Just almost before you got to have range. It's all coming down to a southern, southern side. I, and... I, I, I completely screwed at the moment. Look at the center. Oh god, yeah. Yeah, Genefis and Mons the north as well. It's just it. insane amounts of infantry. 15-9 against Spanish Arita. All of his hard work is going out the window. Yeah, Raita has definitely tunnel visioned probably a little bit too much down south, and he's starting to pay the price, because even if he does manage to, you know, route out this middle and northern force, that's a lot of infantry going to kick out of forests and buildings, and that's, that's, that can be pretty hard to evict. Pilot unconscious. I think it's rather nice that the plane's able to get back to a nice even level flying. Hmm. Um, might see a kill here? Yep. There we go. That's one. Now the pioneers coming in as well. So this might be the Russian pioneers? I don't know. No, those, those are the, the Ranos, I guess. Never mind. But the southern flank is the only thing the Germans really control. The north and the central. That looks like... Yikes. Yeah. I mean, what Spanish could do is, from the southern flank, move a little bit up north and try to cut off the bridgehead. But I don't think he... He's very close to, but he has a rifle platoon that he's going to have to fight against. He does have the tanks and firepower to do so, it's just going to take time. He doesn't really have time. No, but he's going to start to push it back with some tanks to the north of the Panhard and the P3s. So, mm -hmm. that's a positive step for him in the right direction. Yep. And we have, oh my gosh, and we have, we have Commander uh, Motorcycle. Isn't that the recon run? Yeah, you're right. I see, I, I see the radio. The I know. Thing I always think it's commanders. I don't know why. No, it's. I mean, I'm always, I'm always very curious why people ever bother to take recon bikes. It's just not very good. No, no. If they'd be a little bit more survivable, it'd be one thing, but they're just not. Yeah, that's just like our opinion, guys. Um, we do have to talk about this brave uh, P2 who's charging this 25 pounder. <laughs> you could probably kill it. He probably could. The question well, is, does he see it? He can. He's just, like, taking a long time to align because he's continuing to press... Ah! He's gonna get killed. He gets a supply truck, at least. That's true, but he's gonna die immediately. There's a bunch of shirts coming in. Oh, if he could have killed it. He won't survive. Oh. Three, two, one. Turret stuck. Yep. Um, <laughs> here's where I force an attack on the Matador, and I pray for death. Never mind. Oh. But the 25 pounder's like, oh shit, they, they got us they got us cornered. And it's like, oh, he just drove past. Uh, turn the gun around, Jeff. Yeah, exactly. Because yeah, that, that 25 pounder's a pretty good AT gun. Oh, yeah, it completely is. It was, one of, it was probably the closest the Allies had to a dual purpose. Hmm. Meanwhile, to the north, by the way, the Scots are putting up a rather stiff defense against this big push, uh, the A-10 comes on in. Yeah, just absurd amounts of firepower. ME-109 looking to maybe pick up that, uh, Typhoon? I would not go across the... Oh, wow, never mind. He's, he's far enough north that it's gonna be fine. Yeah. Yeah, it was, uh... Th those A-10s. We're gonna just gonna call them A-10 now, guys. It's gonna be extremely useful when it's north in the middle area, because there's no anti-air set up. And it's really just a lot of, you know, soft infantry targets. So it's definitely going to help pin them down, pick them off, and I think Reiter, I think Reiter has this in, in a sense. He's managing to clear up the northern and middle sectors. The problem with the Scotch is that those Churchills take so long to get to the front line, it's really hard to, you know, keep a push like that sustained. Indeed. Indeed. Actually, we have three more, we have three squads. We have uh, a couple of Panzer Grenadiers, ooh, and a Pioneer squad. So it's back to 1311. And who's mm -hmm. behind enemy lines? Okay, we have a, P, a T-34 behind enemy lines. Just chilling. Yeah, you know. Four squads of rifles nearby. Eh, ain't no, ain't no thing but chicken wing. We've even seen a uh, VK-1801 being brought in. Yeah, that's just a P-1, isn't it? Yeah, it's just... It's a P-1, which they made. Because they were like, hey, in, in 1941, we, we need infantry support tanks. Let's just make a really heavily armored P-1. 
then they realized it was a terrible idea and stopped making them after 30 or so. Well, they, they put them at the training tanks, if memory serves, I think. Uh, yeah, they just use them as, like, rear guard units, like, of, uh, you know, Shupo. You know, the depressing thing about this is that we had a several squads of German infantry come to the center, and they completely whiffed. Oh, but here's the pocket being closed, and this is going to be terrible for those four <sighs> squads. Oh, I love seeing a closed pocket, you know. That's just as much as I like eating hot pockets. You know, I gave up Hot Pockets, and uh, my, my digestive tract has thanked me for that. <laughs> it's just my own personal opinion, though. Uh, meanwhile, though, down south, yeah, we've had a ton of vehicle deaths. They've all been happening whenever I've had my back turned, so I apologize there to my side. Um, and all four squads of rifles, yep, they are now behind enemy lines, and I would be quite perturbed by this point. Yeah, they're not in the best position at all. Yeah, that was a real good job and right for securing that, uh, that huge, huge deficit. He isn't out of the clear yet, as he is still losing in terms of points. We got an AT Typhoon being brought in up north. I think he's just going to try and kill the Panhard or something. Yep. No, yeah, it's infantry. A, uh, it's a blind fire on the Panhard's previous position. Okay. But uh, completely misses, as, as we clearly see. No, the infantry is kind of funny. The, the infantry is engaging the Shupos. Meanwhile, tanks are just shelling them from afar. I mean, I, I would just feel awful. Mm -hmm. This is like I'm selling my life as dearly as I can. Rifles behind enemy lines are really not having a good time. EK coming in, and that should easily clear them up. Yeah, two MG34s? I would hope so. Yeah. Fall, falling back. But where to? <laughs> They're trying to get back to the rest in the front, okay? Well, there's a pioneer in the forest. I'm surprised he hasn't pushed a little bit further north to kind of just get all of these surrenders. But, hey, you know. That's really funny how they're falling back towards the enemy line instead of just running eastwards. It's like C'est la guerre. Um, <laughs> yeah, they're going all over the place. This is the Chinese fire drill uh, retreat. <laughs> They can't, can't, they can't capture us all. They go in different directions, boys. To the four winds. <laughs> oh. Oh. Um, I feel bad yep. if I have offended anyone with my humor this week. I sincerely apologize. I think I'm you're fine. Coming off a ton of no sleep. Uh, but the VK-1801, he is, like you said, he's just kind of prowling around. He's sniffing. Where are the rifles? <laughs> where, the, where are the rifles at? <laughs> and to the north, yes, uh, the T, the T, the P threes have gone down. See many, many fires, uh, but the, many Panzers have died to get us to this far. But now is the time to act. We have the Panzer Grenadiers moving around these rifles. Um, we have other ones swinging around the line completely until these other rifle squads get there. It's going to be way too late. This is probably the best chance the Germans have of sealing that north, and I think they might be able to do it as we go into Phase C. Uh, if he unloads that Pank forty at Churchill. Probably be good as dead. Or bad as dead. Either way, I'd be happy with it. Mm -hmm. But you got a second Churchill being. Ah, oh, the Pack 40 gets sniped. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it was Churchill marker. Uh, it was Churchill command tanks. And Chur the Churchill tanks in general. It will prove to be a bit of a pain. Now, the Scots, remind me about their infantry levels. Is there something where they have to be completely nervous? Or are they going to be able to throw infantry at the wall until. Yeah. Uh, they got infantry spam for days. Even if, like, a Vanguard... I mean, you get, like... In C phase, with unfettered rifles, you get 36 in a card. Aha! Uh -huh. That was something that kind of eluded me for a bit, I suppose. Um, First Tiger has hit the field. So this is the make or break for the southern side. Yeah. It is still 12-12. I'm sorry, yes, sir. Yeah, Korakor have four of these two Star Tigers available. Because he got them in C phase. So that's to be pretty much more than enough to do with most of the Scottish things, the Churchills and any other tanks. Hopefully it'll be enough for Rita, for, for himself, to maybe push through. Uh, Churchill's been defanged, by the way. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah, yeah, there's another there's command one's coming to the front, uh, but the pack, there's another pack 40 who put two APCR shells into him. And at long last, kills with the last. Um, yes, there's another one coming in. Yes, there's three more squads of rifles. But a couple of linchpins are being taken out. A second Tiga is on the field. 
This isn't looking good for Genev. He, he had a fantastic push, but he only really had infantry on the front line. He didn't have any AT guns or anything much of substance to help secure what he gained. You know, he is still in the lead, technically, as we tell, but it's really just shooting out Northern Flag, which he, I want to say, barely controls, but that's, that's a lot of riflemen up here. True. True. I'd actually, I'd argue that there's a couple down to the south, like this, his side of the bridge. Um, and in fact, wow, this two-inch carrier, I forgot that they had this thing. Yeah. It's like, it's pretty, like, crazy, because that 50 mil mortar is a goddamn machine gun. It certainly is. In the meantime, uh, more squads of rifles being brought into the south. And the JU-87 is going after the 6-pounder in the north. So, gun pod away. Kind of thought he would be going after things with a little bit more vitalness than that, but uh, that's fine. There you go. Hey, that's going to be dead. Um, at this point, I'd be strafing the bejesus out of that Churchill. Mm-hmm. Strafe everything. You got the ammunition. Yep. Yep, I'm I'm Eric Bana right now in Romulan makeup sh shouting fire everything. <laughs> the record did not realize that, that was him in that under that makeup. Oh. Yeah, exactly. Uh for those of you who have no idea what I'm talking about, first of all it's Star Trek. Second of all, Eric Bana is in Star Trek. Go figure. Um go first to the south, of course, causing enough issues that the gun pod is killed. And that's why you strafe the north, because the north remembers. And they forget to get AA guns as well. Yes, yes, there are no elephants there, if you know what I mean. Outside of that, down to the south, rifles, we've seen the rifle spam is real, and they are just blasting and laughing the entire way. Even Mama says that, that their mind is gone. <laughs> Yeah, securing this uh, southern side for Genef is definitely... I mean, Genef is still running. I'm, I'm quite surprised, because Rita's doing a pretty good job and, you know, playing the momentum and knocking out his major pushes. But I feel like Genef... V maybe pushes down south a bit, or tries to do another breakthrough, but this time for a bit more substance. I think he secured a victory. He's totally good. Yeah, if he wants to get his rifles down south onto the opposite side of his river, to the port of the Churchills and artillery, I, I think he could take us. Certainly it's entirely possible. I mean, wherever the Tigers are, that's where, you know, it's 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 hard to push when the cats are playing. Yeah, but if he uses his air power effectively, like with those Typhoon ATs, I think he can easily deal with those Tigers. Like I said, there's only four of them. Only four kitty cats you're going to have to deal with. Now, the funny thing for me is that there's a P. Gren to the north who he's desperately trying to find a line on that uh, Churchill. Mm -hmm. He doesn't know where it is, so this becomes like the worst game of Manhunt ever. <laughs> it's pretty hard to play hide and seek when you're a 50 tank. Tiger goes tank. down! 17 pounder takes it out. In the center. Middle. Oh! Oh, yeah, there we go. Number one. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. Uh -huh. Uh, oh. Piot, in the meantime, looks like something engaged at T-34. Takes that out. So from one spigot to another. And I think, I, I, I'm tentative to say this, but I, I think it might be that Genef has managed to declaw enough of those, those, uh, German tanks. I feel like, I feel like, yeah. And he's got a pretty good defensive line set up. He's got artillery on the field. I think the artillery is also helping out. True. Right a bit and just keeping a lot of Spanish's stuff pinned down because it's a lot of soft targets in the end of the day. And Genef is just kind of throwing enough AT guns and riflemen at the problem just to keep secure of his lines. I mean, up north, he's still holding on to that town and it feels like a goddamn miracle that he is. Can we talk about the fact that the 25 pounder is just slowly throwing shots down range? Mm hmm. One at a time. Yep. Dude, this is not slow pitch softball. You are trying to kill him. Last shot coming on through. This might be a kill. Never mind. Luckily for him, it is not. Mm hmm. Got a, uh. No, oh, yeah. Kind of a Flak 88. It's. No, it's the Russian Flak 85. Yeah. Yeah. But they still call it 85-88mm. I'm a little bit confused by that. 
If anyone knows what that 85 slash 88 means, let me know. Was it the Germans just, you know, just calling any heavy AA gun an 88? Actually, wasn't there a gun that, that could dual chamber? I don't think about that. I think there's a gun that could dual chamber. I don't know if that was a Russian or not. Probably not. I'm probably wrong there. But part of me remembers something like that being an awesome idea. Oh, okay, so down to the south. Yeah. Uh, 85 mils. Because it's 85 plus 88, but it's shooting 85 mil ammo, but it also has 88 mil as a designation, so maybe that's just their designation for they just call every single heavy AA gun that they managed to require an 88. I was looking at the one to the north, I apologize. Yeah. Uh, Sist possible. Let us know in the comments if you know. Hopefully you know. Hopefully someone knows who watches this. Honestly, I feel like we have some of the most intelligent viewers out there. Yeah. Um, I had one guy tell me all about, uh, I think it was an allied division who is pretty much all about Boita stuff. I remember we talked about it a little while ago. The American one? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we, we have we have the best viewers. Um, at the Hungary, I have a, a Hungary file out there as well, so I mean... So you may. Um, meanwhile, Churchill Command Tank finally finds himself running afoul of a Pack 40 Pack 40 does try to lock shots down that road. True killed. Shooter has been killed as well, just in case it wasn't enough to kill him once. And bailing out. So, the crew's dead, and they just bailed out. Mm -hmm. I, this is going to allow Rita to take his northern town finally back under control, and that's to bring it to a trove trove. Yeah, the Pack 14 Tiga is definitely going to be a you know, pain in the ass to deal with. But I, we are seeing... T thirty four forty ones being thrown in every which direction, so I think that kind of tells you a lot about how Benisher sees the current fight. Yeah, yeah. I mean, especially with T thirty four forty one models. Even the Russians aren't using T thirty four forty ones at this point. No, nope. no, they are not. They realized it's kind of worthless. Yeah, it's a little bit, a little bit outdated. Uh, but yet they are still dangerous enough to take out Churchill's. Like one mm -hmm. down to the south has been slain. And shockingly enough, um, that's why this, this pot truck is not close enough to actually reload that 25 pounder. Oh yeah, just barely out of range. It's a little bit of a shame yeah, for the 25 pounder, but uh, hmm. I know this is the real like we're 13 minutes in, and I have no idea who's gonna win. You know, I I want to see Cowork come Same. out on top, um, but I I don't know that's going to happen. Oh, I, I feel like Genef just has enough quality things on field as well as the artillery to just secure him the victory. Well, he has those freaking typhoons. Oh, yeah. That just will not stop. Uh, he has a typhoon to the north hitting a tiger. He's got a typhoon down south that's hitting a tiger. Oh, no, never mind. I'm sorry. He's only has infantry there. That's still that's a good call. Mm-hmm. Shot down a bridge. And the tiger is making the risky maneuver. He's going across the bridge. There's nothing really to shoot at it though, other than this Bofors, which mm -hmm. is kind of just going to make you laugh. I'm wondering if Genef is starting to run out of stuff now, because he's playing a Vanguard income division. Does he still have enough tanks, and or really tanks I guess, to keep keep the fight going? Enough AT, all of that? He's got a 17 pounder down south, so the answer's probably- and a run up north, so the answer's probably yes. Yeah, probably very, very true. Um. And the one up north as well. I mean, 17-pounders, not anything to sneeze at. No, no. I, I wouldn't want to get shot by a 17-pounder. To be fair, I wouldn't like to be shot, but I understand exactly what you mean. Uh, seven LDF Grenadiers to the south being matched by five rifles, and not for nothing, as much as I want to be like, oorah, um, I don't know the Grenadiers are going to have enough firepower if the riflemen get to any kind of defensive position. Yeah. Uh, I have a feeling Rita may be able to make another, like, push down south here and capture, capture the southern bridgehead. He's got the tanks across the field. It's just about whether or not Genev can get the 17-pounder online and pick off these T-34s and, most importantly, the Tiga. Uh, well, we'll see. One T-34 is going to get seen in just a moment here, I think. Or is the Tiger the first thing? Never mind, yep. here comes T34. Here comes T34. And it's going to come out of range immediately, so it's yep. not going to matter. The Tiger 
I guess so close again into range. It's hitting it with AT rockets. Misses you. Is that as a direct fire order? No, but it's enough. It's enough to allow the Bofors now. The Bofors is engaging it, and now the 17 pounder is <laughs> going to have a field day. Yep. Yeah. There we go. And the off map yep. artillery is uh, killing stuff as it comes across the bridge. The rifles closing in the pocket. And I think. I think Genef is going to be able to hold his southern side. You know, at the same time as all the Grenadiers are pretty good. As they do have those MG34s. True. True, but when we don't unload them, that's a problem. Yeah, when the recce troops run by, spraying the <laughs> trucks with stent on ammo. It's spraying prey. Yes, and, you know, prayer, prayer seems to be working over here in the Scottish lines. Ooh, but when you lose a 203 to a Shupo, that's, that's a little bit weird. 15 9! Oh, well, how? What? I guess an old northern side. Uh, yeah. ME four ten is gonna plaster these rifle uh, rifle squads down here. Might even kill the two hundred three off map. We'll see. We will see. Uh, but bombs are up, and yep, we see suppression. If nothing else, we might see a couple surrenders here. Yeah, those supos can come in and seal the deal, I think. If frontline moves, there we go. One down, and two down. In the meantime, I think, you know, I think you're right. I think outside of Spanish are really kind of throwing it here. Another ME four ten is looking to clean up this infantry in the middle. Yes, there's only a Shupo and a LVF Grenadier there, but it's going to be quite devastating. Oh, I just no want anti air. Oh yeah. I'm sorry, you're saying, sir. I just want to take a look down south and just yeah, southern town. It's uh, it's been Ooh. hit a little bit, you know. ME four ten, by the way, not to. I'm sorry to cut you no. off. ME four ten, the bombing run mm -hmm. takes out two full squads of rifles. <sighs> That's pretty good. Yeah, it is. That's, like, jolly good show. And I just took a look at what you were seeing down there. Yeah, that, that town has seen better days. Um, yep. I, I guess that's what you would call a boom town, right? <laughs> it looks pretty bust right now. Ah, oh, so it's a ghost town now. Gotcha, you're right. And meanwhile, a 17-pounder oh. and a T-34 kill each other in a move moment so dramatically beautiful, <laughs> it's almost hard not to you know, oh, blow your match. nose. Yeah, it's a crazy match. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, I just feel like Spencer so just managed to survive the attrition roll fit just, just by a bit. Wait, you're saying Spencer managed it? Got it. I was fighting around my head. Never mind. Continuing on, uh, more 410s coming in. There's been so much, so many payloads just divested upon the Scottish lines. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the, t the tables have definitely turned a bit compared to those typhoons doing those bombing runs, and there's four tens, don't mess about. Like DJs, man. They definitely are turning those tables. Mm-hmm. Yeah, one twenty-five pounder goes down, and uh, Janesh is out of stuff at this point. He has no infantry on the field being brought out. Just, uh... Churchill's and Spanish, so he's got supos for days. And yep, and there's the yep. tap. Very good game from from both sides. Real fantastic yes, play. Really. Very close on kills. Look, yeah, only like a 240 point difference. Uh, Typhoon's got two air kills and a couple of muds. And uh, Honey Stewart. I mean, we have some rather spread apart kills. 25 pounders getting themselves a decent amount of kills. Bofors mm -hmm. as well. Oh, yeah. Jack the Churchill. Wait, isn't oh. Jack Churchill a person? Yeah, he was the guy who did a. He, the longbow. He, he, yeah, he killed a not. He killed a German officer of, of a longbow. Only confirmed bow and arrow kill of the war. Thank you for censoring that. I really do appreciate it. <laughs> no. uh, one, yep. two, three. Uh, another Churchill down below. Uh, apparently, was the bane of anti-tank guns. Yeah, just tons of kills back and forth. Dogs and cats living together. Mass hysteria. Mm-hmm. And losses here, nothing too crazy. It's, I mean, it's much more egalitarian. Yeah. Everyone did their part, except exactly. for Pridifan Norfer. He did it a little bit. Oh, uh, Pri Priestendorfer. Sorry, Priestendorfer. Uh, that's the double S, the sharpest S. So Looks like a pretzel. 
Yes, and I wish that there was a reason for it. I kind of forgot the reasoning behind that one. So if anyone wants to educate us in linguistics, by all means, let us know in the comments below. I definitely would love to hear that again. I kind of forgot the reason behind the Sharp Assess. Isn't it just like the guy who made letters on Greens, like, oh boy, I always had a pretzel, and just started drawing pretzels as letters, and everyone just ran with it? So you're saying he was like a daydream, and then he was like, yeah. dude, I just created a totally new letter. Awesome. <laughs> entirely possible. It's entirely possible. That's how the Germans have such great beer and cheese. Mm -hmm. Um, but while we ponder the mysteries of the universe, any final thoughts for our more proximate defeat here for Ganef? Send us more replays and send them with interest in divisions. We like matches like this. Yeah. 15 Scots versus Korok? First of all, I think this is the first Korok game we've ever passed. Uh, I think we did one or two, but that was like a long time ago. Long time ago in terms of months. Well, let's just say I'm yeah. an old man. Apparently I don't remember that at all. But regardless... Regardless, folks, as always, thank you so much for coming on out to spend your time with us. Um, I guess until the next time, I'm Con Ulrich. I'm Rangaroo. Take it easy.